I think we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome to the IFR Energy seminar series, uh, research exchange. Uh, one announcement is Citr Twi uh, Citrus is on Twitter at, at Citrus News, so please follow us there. Um, at the end of the talk, there'll be a question and answer session, and the online webcast viewers, those in, at different campuses, um, can ask questions live via Twitter via the uh, hashtag CitrusRE, so re research exchange. So with that, I will introduce our speaker, Alec Chen. Alec is currently a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at, here at UC Berkeley. His current research is focused on two fronts, methods to improve LED efficiency through cooling with low noise piezoelectric fans, and design and, th and synthesis of extremely low cost composite thermoelectric materials for west, uh, excuse me, waste heat energy generation. Alec is also the research and development manager of healthcare at Citrus and works on developing large multi-institutional and multidisciplinary healthcare research projects. Prior to his current re re work, uh, Alec's research focused on thermal energy harvesting for th with thermal electrics for self-powered sensors with applications to implantable medical devices, body sensor networks, and aging in place. Uh, his current research interests include mobile health healthcare technologies, wireless sensor systems for medical and industrial applications, and clean energy technologies. Alec received his PhD and MS in mechanical engineering here at UC Berkeley, and his BS in mechanical engineering from Johns Hopkins University in 2007. So please welcome Alec Chen. Thank you. Hello. Can you all hear me? All right, thank you. Um, so I'm here to talk about our uh, LED cooling project uh, using piezoelectric fans. And this work is done uh, in conjunction with Siemens. Um, and I'm here representing my group, uh, which includes Heva Smiley and Alan Harbottom and uh, Professor Paul Wright. And uh, for those of you who uh, we're at the i for energy Symposium about a month or so ago. Some of this stuff will be a little familiar, but I'll show some of these things. So, you know, to talk about the motivation of, you know, why we're using or why we're even looking into active LED cooling, you know, with, with the increasing usage of LEDs for lighting solutions, thermal management is becoming a real issue, um, you know, about... More than 60% of the energy that's put into LEDs are converted into heat. And from those losses and those increase in temperature, you end up decreasing the intensity of these LEDs, the lifespan of these LEDs shorten, and the efficiency of these LEDs uh, are worsened. So, you know, typically thermal management for LED systems, like you see over here, are passive heat sinks in, uh, placed behind the LED junction to, you know, cool the... Cool the Junction temperature. However, you know, using a, by using an active LED cooling system, you can dramatically reduce the temperature even more and improve some of these, uh, you know, properties of LEDs that you're looking for. Now, looking at our uh, project overview, while well, talking to Siemens, they were interested in using uh, piezoelectric actuators as uh, LED cooling solutions. Uh, in particular. You know, they were looking for something that was very low noise uh, and could last, you know, more than 20,000 hours. Um, their specs were a 50 by 60 millimeter uh, heat sink geometry with about a 30 millimeter height. Um, and typically, temperatures would be around 100 to 120 degrees Celsius from the start, from 20 watts of heat. And they wanted to cool these LEDs, or cool these junctions down to about 60 or 70 degrees 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. So looking at piezoelectric fans, uh, this image on the bottom left is a, uh, what a piezoelectric fan looks like. It's composed of a piezoelectric beam base uh, attached with a mylar sheet. And the entire length of this beam is about 3 inches, uh, about 10 millimeter wide. When you apply a, uh, alternated alternating current, um, you know, 115 volts at 60 hertz, uh, in particular for this model here, it resonates at uh, 60 hertz. And what you see is that vibration. Um, it's essentially a flapping motion. And the displacement of the tip can range up to about, you know, one and a half, 
uh, actually you know, about two inches almost uh, when it's at resonant frequency. So by using this flapping motion, you can think of it as, as a, a method to cool uh, you know, systems. And you know, the nice thing about you know, this, this beam resonating at 60 hertz is that that's just you know, the low end of the audible range, so it's very low noise. And that's a very, uh, very important issue for these active cooling systems because when you have large fans on these systems, you know, it adds noise and it's not an ideal scenario for using these LEDs. So you know, we, we set forth at first to look at you know, how, where can we place these fans um, on a, a heated block, uh, which was you know, the 50 by 60 millimeter dimensions that were given. Um, you know, there are a lot of different configurations. You, know, you can have it forward. It can be parallel. Um, you know, we, can, we basically looked at different configurations, um, you know, tried to figure out you know, what sort of position relative, from the fan relative to the heated block you know, would give us an ideal scenario. So we, we set forth uh, you know, doing, doing an experimental setup. Um, and this was essentially uh, what we built. Uh, what you see over here on the left is a, uh, this heated block over here. And here is the piezoelectric fan. And in this heated block, we embed it with four 10-watt heaters behind the back to heat the temperature up. And then we embed thermocouples inside the block to monitor the temperature constantly. So we heated it up to about 100 degrees Celsius at about um, a little more than 10 watts of heat for this specific system. Uh, and we had this fan placed rel you know, at various positions along the block. And we placed it in different orientations. And by doing that, you know, we were able to move it around and monitor the temperature as it reached steady state, you know, collect that data, move it to another position, watch that hit steady state, you know, measure the temperature. And it was an iterative process while we went through the different configurations that we had. So you know, because, because of the you know, repetitive nature and the steady state, uh, or you know, our need for a steady state temperature, that we decided to automate this process using our own uh, system, which, you know, where you see this fan moving around uh, and, and cooling. So our initial findings uh, after doing this test, we you know, measured the temperature change from the starting temperature to the, to the steady state temperature, took into account the heat input, the heat losses. Um, what we synthesized that down to is a calculated uh, convective uh, cooling coefficient, which uh, in terms of, for, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, convective heat transfer, you want a high, as high of a convective cooling coefficient as you can get uh, for this sort of system. Uh, you know, the higher it is, the more cooling you get. Typically, natural convection, free flow air ranges around 5 to 10, or 1 to 10 uh, watt per meter squared Kelvin. So, you know, as you use force convection, you get a higher convective coefficient. So, you know, we, we looked at Comparing the different, uh, let's in this case, you know, vertical and horizontal configuration, um, as you see on those images over there, as a function of the percentage of the plate covered, so how much the fan covered the, the, the total plate. What we found was that you get the most cooling, the highest convective coefficient, at around 12.5 and 25 percent coverage points. Um, and this was true for both the vertical and horizontal configuration. And this will make sense when, once we start looking at some of the flow profiles, as, as uh, I'll show later on. So then if we compare you know, the additional forward configuration there um, and do that as a function of the distance of the fan from the plate, um, we find that well, first you get the most cooling when that the fan is as close to the plate as possible. Um, and that, that seems to make intuitive sense because the, the highest flow velocities are near the tip of the fan. Um, although, you know, the change is not drastically significant. Um, but in the case of the forward configuration, you get the most cooling. However, you know, when you place the fan in this forward configuration relative to the heated block, it takes up a lot of space. 
And that really exceeds those 30 millimeter uh, requirement that we've been set with. So, you know, as, as we keep that under consideration, uh, we decided to move forward with the vertical configuration uh, so that it could have a more low profile streamlined design when we come up with the, the final packaging. So then we compared, uh, you know, we started looking at different heat sink designs, you know, different fins, um, you know, different pillars. You know, we tried exploring various options. Um, we, we started with some finite element analysis to do the, do the initial analysis. However, due to the, uh, you know, complexity in doing three-dimensional flow, um, you know, we went forward on the experimental path. So in this chart, uh, we, we mapped out some of the convective coefficients that we've measured, uh, the average convective coefficients that we've measured um, in, in, you know, in our test up compared across these different heat sink designs. So you know, if we start with a baseline case of uh, around you know, 25 watts per meter squared Kelvin for just a heated block. Um, and it's a little higher than typical natural convection because uh, you know, of the draft in the room. Um, the, you know, we decided to look at a configuration where we had walls along the side um, to trap some of the flow that was being lost along the edges and having this foil uh, around the center. And, and I'll show our reasoning behind that in the next couple slides too. Um, you know, if we add the fan in there, so in this case, this is again, natural, but with the heat sink or a passive um, with no active cooling, um, when we add the foil, we increase the convective coefficient. When we stick the fan here, um, the convective coefficient in the heat sink goes up, so we get more cooling. Um, we also ended up placing a lid because we noticed there was a lot of flow lost in the Z direction. And so you know, with, with this design here, we were essentially able to get, start with 100 degrees Celsius, um, a block that was 100 degrees Celsius, and cool that down to about 45 degrees Celsius um, in, in this setup. We also looked at you know, a more traditional finned heat sink here. So you know, this probably looks very familiar. Um, but we want to see what that would look like by placing a fan around, you know, near it and seeing if we can get flow around it and how, how that would work. It turns out it works pretty well. Um, however, um, so, so this, these two graphs are a little busy, but what you're seeing here is the convective coefficient as a function of, uh, I guess, time in this case, because this is how our experiment was done. Um, but what these, these blocks show are the percent coverages. So you know, for this configuration, 0, 12.5, 25% coverage as the, you know, the fan moves along the plate. Um, till it basically hits the edge of this. And in each one of these steps are the uh, heights, so how, how high the, the, fin, uh, the piezo fan is relative to the plate. And so it's steps 531, 531. And that's the same with the other one, um, except in this case we have a lid over the top to try to capture, or, uh, move some of the flow that was being lost in the Z direction. Um, in both of these, you know, you get the most cooling at 0% coverage and about 5 millimeters from the plate. So, and, and we get values that are quite high at around uh, 100 um, watts per meter squared Kelvin. But what we noticed, though, was that as we measured the flow in the individual channels here, so there was almost no flow in some of them. So, you know, we, we needed to reconsider this and try to find a way to make sure there was more uniform flow across all of them. Um, and not just flow, you know, high, high velocity flow down some of the channels. And so we think we can even improve this. Now, you know, we've been mostly looking at experimental measurements of convective transfer coefficients. And so, you know, we wanted to also look at the flow profile of these fans. So we did that one of two ways. The first one was using particle image velocimetry. And uh, this was in conjunction with, uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Peo's lab in mechanical engineering. And what they have there is a P PIV setup, particle image velocimetry setup. Um, you have a camera and a laser um, pointed at your 
piezo fan. Um, all of this in a plexiglass chamber. It's filled with atomized oil, and it's you know that causes the particles to um, you know re reflect a lot of the light. And then the camera basically captures two sequential images. And based on the positions of those particles, it's able to back calculate and figure out the, the uh, velocity vectors um, of the particles. So you know, that, that's a visualization technique we can use to see what's going on with the fan. You know, where is most of the flow going? And, you know, and look at some of the different heat sink designs we, we've considered. So in this image here, um, what you're seeing is a, is a top view. This is the fan in this, ver what, um, you know, flapping in this direction. And you have this foiled heat sink uh, where we, we can see a lot of flow. Um, you know, these, these green lines are the vectors. So, you know, the, the longer they are, you know, the higher the flow velocity. So, so you can see that, you know, you have high flow velocity down the center line here with some flow velocities along the you know, channel wall. Um, some parts are missing because of poor illumination. So um, we can convert this data and, and you know, overlay it. And what you see here, these are flow velocity in meters per second, um, where red being a higher flow velocity, blue being almost no flow. Um, and and you, it sort of matches up with the previous one. Um, if we move up on the plane of this, particular image, um, you know, coming out of the page, you can start seeing that there's a lot of flow above the heat sink. So, uh, you know, some of the flow around here, the higher vectors here, and then you can see some of the, the vectors going down into the page. Um, so, you know, PIV seems like a, you know, nice scientific method to do it. However, the images are very hard to decipher. And you know the the, resol you know, the resolution is not not very good, um, and, and you, you, it takes a lot of data processing to get these images. So what we decided to you know after trying trying to use PIV to try to capture data um, and processing through a lot of images, we decided to look at a more you know a simpler technique, um, although a much coarser technique, uh, using a hot wire anemometer. So you know these are pretty standard. Um, hot wire anemometers that you can they, they use for measuring you know HVAC systems. And what we took was a, an anemometer and we built a setup where we had um, the fan, you know, placed you know in our in our configuration. We had it mounted um, and basically moved it um, and captured average data points as we moved it around. So in this case. What we did was we, we measured these little white points that you see on here. We measured the, the flow, um, but you know, take into account that we can only know the magnitude of the airflow. We don't know anything about the direction, but we can map it, though, um, on a grid. So by taking all these points, we can interpolate the data. And what we see here is that you know, this is the piezo fan. This is from the top down. You get the highest velocity near the tip, but it comes off at an angle. Um, about 45 to 50 degrees uh, in, in a V shape. And this was similar to what we had seen with the PIV. Um, now, that, that, now that sort of makes sense for us when, we're look, you know, when we think back about cooling a, a heated block. You know, when you have a, this V shape, at basically at 12.5 to 25% coverage, you know, most of the flow, or that, that's when you get most of the flow actually going over the heated surface. Um, when you're too far, you know, when the coverage is at 0%, where the plate starts here, you know, you don't get any flow further down. When you're all the way, you know, across the plate at 50% or more coverage where the plate, let's say, starts here, you don't get any real flow um, or, you know, around these, these areas. So we could do, we could, you know, this seems like a pretty decent technique, um, you know, for us to measure some of the flow velocity magnitudes. And we decided to take this a little further and, you know, try to, instead of just looking at a plate, you know, we took our heat sinks and basically, you know, print the little dots um, to mark the measurement points, spaced these grid points about five millimeters apart, which then let us 
you know, basically place the hot wiring monitor and measure different points along there. And then from this data, we can map the, oops, let me go back here, map the, map the uh, magnitudes of the velocities, um, you know, in this case, with the channels. Um, and, you know, the design with the channels was to basically reroute the flow that was going off uh, on these angles back onto the, the heated block. And so, you know, in this case, when we have channel walls, you see most of the flow going along the edges, um, but, you know, almost no flow going down the center. And this is when we move towards this, uh, you know, foil design here. Um, and now what we see is that you still have, oops, you still have flow going down the channel walls, but now we've redirected a lot of flow down the center, uh, down the streamline. This sort of looks like a spaceship. Um, but... You know, th this gives us an, an interesting approach to now add on additional heat, uh, additional structures around here so that we can then cool a larger surface area. And that's really the goal. We want to cool as much surface area as we can get uh, to really reduce the temperature. So now, you know, we're looking at trying to build these adjustable foils so then we can determine how to position and optimize the flow profile. Um, and we can then measure it using a hot wire anemometer, um, verify that with some sort of PIV. And once we can, you know, once we can design and iterate through that flow profile, we can then build it and do the experimental tests, uh, the heat transfer experiments that we uh, did earlier on. And so, um, you know, looking ahead, you know, we're, we're trying to continue iterate, uh, iterating some of the heat sink designs um, you know, to take advantage of whatever flow profiles, uh, you know, do more visualization and some of the um, you know, experimental work. And you know, finally, you know, with our project ra almost wrapping up, um, we're, we're, on, we're looking to design this, the fin and heat sink, uh, heat sink together and try to find ways to package this all together. So. Um, you know, with that, I want to acknowledge, um, you know, our uh, Siemens uh, sponsor, uh, Thomas Vance, um, Daniel Murphy and Harlan from uh, Payo's Lab, and uh, our colleagues at the BMI. Thank you. I know in my experience, I find 60 cycle hum to be a lot more objectionable than, say, white noise or something like that. Now, mm -hmm. an individual fan might be very quiet, but if you've got a whole ceiling full of those things operating in phase, you might get an objectionable noise. And I wonder if you've thought about that or experimented with that and whether you thought, maybe, you thought of maybe uh, using them with, at different phases or different frequencies so that they will uh, cancel out in case they, the, you know, the noise does build. So, um, yeah, that, that's a very good point. Um, so if you run, the, since these fans are designed, or the fans we used are designed to resonate at 60 hertz, if you run them at lower frequencies, um, you know, where you get less, uh, less noise, you are not going to have as much of a displacement uh, of the fan tip. So your, your cooling is really affected. However, um, what, what, I could, what I can think of... Uh, you know, as a possible solution, is to use design fans with a lower resonant frequency, which um, are available and some groups have done, um, and, and in terms of building your own piezo fan to sort of, you know, go so, so that it, it's below, below 60 hertz and, and maybe not as objectionable, uh, objectionable to some. Um, well, I mean, you, you might, clearly if you're operating it off AC, uh, you would have to operate them all at 60 hertz. Now, um, you might be able to use, you know, sure. I was thinking you might have, you might have to use frequency generators and have different resonant frequency fans, so I just have a range of frequencies on, random range of frequencies that those, that's built into those fans. That might be a necessity, but maybe, you know, right. maybe no one will hear it, who knows. Right, and, and they, they do sell, or, you know, you can design circuits to, um, you know, output. I, so they, they do sell and design circuits that, um, not just run off, you know, 115 volt, 60 hertz, but also, you know, DC 
12 to 15 volt DC power, which is pretty common for a lot of you know, fans. And then from that, then they, they switch that to, you know, I guess the resonant frequency of the fan. Um, but that requires additional circuitry. Have you been able to quantify in any way your efficiency, like your flow power divided by your electrical input power? Um, not at this point. Okay. Um, we, we, I mean, that's something we, we plan on doing at, at, d down the line. Um, the thing is, you know, with these fans, the uh, input power is very low. It's around, I think, 30 milliwatts, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you know, our, our, I guess our input power hasn't really been much of a concern for us. Uh, but in some low power applications, that, that may, might be an issue. Would you mind going to the slide where you show the, uh, the piezo fan running? Sure. I think it was back like slide one or two. Let me see. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy that wants to see the slide at the beginning of the presentation. So is the actual piezo device, you know, an inch and a half or so away from that clamp? Because it looks like maybe it's just the... The displacement's too small, but it sure looks like the oscillations start halfway out on the fan. Right, because this part of the fan is mylar, and this part of it is PZT. So PZT is very stiff. Oh, and the PZT is just given the mylar whatever resonance right. it wants. So, so oh. together, the beam together has a 60 hertz you know, resonant frequency, and okay. so that's its uh, I guess first mode deflection. Great. Yeah, thanks. Um, you had one slide showing where you compare um, just having uh, cooling ribs on it and with the, um, and the other one with the fan on it. Could you go to that slide? Uh, uh, fan showing, sorry, cooling. Um, just flip through a couple more slides, okay. I think. Um, that one, yes. Uh -huh. um, okay. Have you ever done measurements if you just put like these cooling ribs um, on it and how much uh, of heat they dissipate on their own, because now you you said you have uh, you don't have a constant flow through all of the channels, right? If right. you use these cooling ribs, that's why you get a better flow with these fins, right. but you also lose the cooling capacity pretty much of the the original ribs through that. So I I am wondering if the advantages of a better flow outweigh the advantages of having uh, a real Oh, so compared to the, the fins, this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I don't have that data on here, but in terms of the passive cooling, um, just from having these fins on there, if I remember correctly, the convective coefficients are around 40 to 50 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Um, I wouldn't be 100% sure on that right now, but that, that's what I remember. But you, I mean, there, um, was, no, there was still a, uh, you know, significant improvement by just having the fan on there. Um, I, I will have to check, double check that, and you know, we can maybe talk about that offline. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, well thanks very much again, Thank you. Alec.